Welcome to this Lenten study. I'm Doug Gebhard, Interim Pastor at Trinity Church in Wexford, Pennsylvania. For the past four weeks, we've examined how we can contribute to ending hunger in our world. We've been using a study guide from the ELCA for our time together. We study scripture, connect biblical teachings to our lives, and discern what to do, not just how to be. We begin each session with a litany based on the prophet Isaiah. I'll read the parts marked L, and you can respond with the words in bold marked R. I'll leave a time of silence for your response. Please join me. God of justice, God of life, in this season of Lent, we remember the work that you call us to do. Recall us to your promise and make us people of memory. As we long for clean, safe water, remind your church that you call us to protect access to the natural resources on which life depends. As violence threatens the most vulnerable among us, remind your church that you call us to work for the safety and security of all our neighbors. As injustice leaves its mark on our communities, remind your church that you call us to strive for justice in all the earth. As we face the reality of a hungry world in which some have plenty and many have too little, remind your church that you call us to ensure all are fed. God of justice, God of life, Inspire us and incite us with your call and your promise. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. This week's reading is from the Gospel of John. As I read it, contemplate how God is speaking to you and ask yourself what God is inviting you to do. Let's hear it. Now among those who went up to worship the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. The theme of this study has been ending hunger. We've heard stories of faithful congregations across the United States doing something to address this crisis. As the study guide says, ending hunger means committing ourselves to be a more inclusive vision of community, to honesty, to justice, and to one another. This final session is about taking action and tells the story of one such action in Columbia.
Almost 690 people around the world are undernourished. More than 35 million people in the United States face food scarcity, and hunger around the world has been on the rise. With the pandemic, there have been historic levels of unemployment. Experts fear that hunger and poverty could increase dramatically in the years to come as we recover from the pandemic's effects. In 1527, Martin Luther addressed how a Christian should act in a pandemic in response to the plague that returned to Wittenberg. After highlighting the ways God shows concern for good health in Scripture and exhorting his readers to care for their neighbors, Luther wrote that prayer, though important, isn't enough. Why study hunger in Lent? Well, this season helps us remember that when Jesus fasted and faced a testing, Jesus' initial temptation was when Satan tempted the famished Jesus to turn stones to bread, thus ending his hunger. Imagine how tempting that was. Imagine how parents with famished children might respond in such a situation. Imagine how the 690 million undernourished people in the world would respond to the power to turn stones into food. Hunger won't miraculously end. Hunger will end as God works with, among, and through people. Because people are people, this can be slow, tedious, even frustrating work. And this kind of social change is usually done by taking small steps. Carolina Camargo, a nurse from Colombia, works with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Colombia and the church's Justice in Life initiative, which is supported by the ELCA World Hunger. Carolina works with others in the initiative's From War to Peace project. This project reconnects the church and communities in Colombia that have been torn apart by violence. Addressing conflict and working for peace are central to ending hunger. Conflict is one of the most significant causes to hunger increasing around the world. When people's lives are threatened, they don't feel safe going to work or staying home. Many are forced to flee their homeland to protect their families. Because of the conflict, land may be confiscated or destroyed. Markets are often closed or empty. Parents and workers may be injured or killed in the violence. The United Nations estimates that up to 80% of humanitarian needs around the world are caused by conflict. Building peace is a critical step in ending hunger, but it is a difficult step to take. Carolina has said, there are people who believe that you can close your eyes and yearn for peace without making an effort towards it. What God allowed me to know is very different from that idealism the reality I could observe and live, expressing hope in all the people who are part of this change. Building peace and ending hunger require that the community take action and be emboldened by the hope and faith that God is moving the world closer to peace and ending hunger. Lent pushes and pulls us on the journey to the cross. The cruciform life allows us to see 690 million hungry people not as something to despair about. Living a resurrection life, we trust that God is with us in each step we take toward God's promised future. In hope, we expand our vision of what it means to be we. In hope, we are honest about the challenges we face. In hope, we invest in our shared future. In hope, we speak up for justice. Let's pause and reflect on what we've learned this week. Think about a time when you acted and it created a positive change. What did you do? What happened? What did it feel like? Where have you seen God turning prayers into action?
Think about the prayers you share during worship. Bring one prayer to mind. How might your community turn this prayer into action? What small or large steps could you take? Where is there a need for action to end hunger in your community? What will it take to move this action forward? Each week, you're presented with a challenge, and your challenge this week, or maybe this weekend, would be this. Eat only what is included in a typical backpack for the weekend, as part of a children's backpack program. This is similar to the following. Mac and cheese, soup, granola bar, shelf-stable milk, cereal, canned fruit, raisins, dried beans or canned pasta, canned meat, and canned vegetables. Healthy meals are so important for learning and growing. Almost one million children in Pennsylvania receive nutritious meals through federal school nutrition programs every day. This includes the National School Lunch Program, School Breakfast Program, After School Snack Program, Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, Child and Adult Care Food Program, and Summer Food Service Program. The Summer Food Service Program provides weekday lunches at a variety of sites in at-risk communities. Filling in the gaps between the end of the summer feeding programs and the beginning of the school year is another way you and your congregation can get involved. Backpack programs are another way that schools, churches, and communities are working together to provide food for hungry children over the weekend, which supplements the meals they receive in school during the weekday. ELCA World Hunger has an excellent resource, the Backpack Buddies Guide, which can be downloaded or ordered free through the ELCA website. Lent is a season in which we examine who we are, if our faith aligns with Jesus' self-giving, and how his life, death, and resurrection affect our way of putting faith in action. Challenges such as these can help us in our Lenten journey of self-examination. There's so much to think about and much to do. And we can't do anything if we're not fortified in our spirit. So let's pray. God of promise, God of hope, God of fullness, God of peace. Guide us, your people, to be your hands and feet, to work together as you build on our rocky soil a new, just world where all are fed. Amen. Thank you for joining me in this Lenten study. I hope you learned something and have felt called to put your faith in action. As the ELC says, it's God work in our hands. Until we meet again, may God be with you.